In this video, I'm going to review the use of the Jupyter Notebook interface and different ways of using Python within Jupyter. Well, what I've shown previously in class is a Jupyter Notebook where I demonstrated how to use uh, CSV, comma separated value, uh, format files. So here I was reading in a, a file and then I would print the lines from it. That's what we'll call the, the Jupyter Notebook uh, typical use case. Over on the left hand side, there's a couple of buttons in addition to the menu at the top of the window. So if I look over on this left side and hover over the thing that looks like a file, it says File Browser in the tooltip. I'm going to expand that. And then I see basically uh, all the files that are available for me to open from within Jupyter. So as an example, if I had this file sample.csv that I was reading, that is right here. So I can double click on that file and Jupyter has a tabbed browser interface. So this is within the a single web browser tab. Jupyter's tabs uh, are here. And so we can see the contents of that file within the Jupyter interface. And then we can close those tabs with uh, the close button there. The other thing uh, that I've, I'm using in this Jupyter notebook, we'll close this here again, is this markdown cell. So here, if I double click on that, I see that there's two pound signs or hashtags in front of the text. That's a special uh, indicator to Jupyter to render this as a larger font in the browser and to include this numbering system. So if I change this to a single tag, hashtag, and then hit shift return, then it would change the style of that to be a larger uh, text. So again, the other thing to note here is that I'm switching from one cell that is in Markdown to another cell, and the type of that cell is code. So I can change back and forth by selecting whether I want code, and then it interprets that same text as a comment because of the tag, hashtag, and I can interpret it as raw, which means ignore any sort of uh, indicators like the hashtag. So it won't be interpreted as code, and it won't be interpreted as markdown. So I'm going to switch this back to markdown again, and then hit shift return to format it. So that's a little bit about the use of markdown versus code cells. So this is useful for documentation. You can see here when I click on this, the cell is in the markdown syntax, but because there's no extra formatting there, it just returns text. So with this uh, this markdown here, the utility of that, if I can change these over to be uh, formatted as uh, section one and section two, is on the left hand side, there's uh, this table of contents. And if I click on that, I can see that my sections are laid out um, as a table of contents in this menu. So that's very useful when I'm having a very long notebook with many sections, I can quickly navigate to the right section. And if this section here was incorrectly marked as 2.1 and I want to make it 3, I can just remove that uh, to a single hashtag and now it's section 3. So this is now my notebook with three sections and I can navigate back and forth through the table of contents. So like right now, if I'm lost in the notebook, I can get back to a section header using that markdown syntax. So that's a little bit about the table of contents and how to use markdown. There's a bunch of other um, options over on the left hand side here that I can uh, recommend you take a look at, but the primary one here is the, the file browser. 
So, so far I've showed you what a Jupyter Notebook with the file extension IPYNB looks like. Now I want to show you two other ways of running Python within Jupyter. So if we click on this plus sign here, uh, the new launcher, that'll open a new tab in Jupyter. And that new tab called launcher has a bunch of options. So if we click on the notebook, that'll give us a new IPython notebook. If we click on text file, that'll give us a new text file. So by default, when I click on that launcher button for new text file, it opens a new tab, closes the launcher tab, and creates the file. So the file extension by default is .txt, a plain text file. I'm going to change that to my underscore script.py. And now you can see the icon for that file has changed to a Python logo. The value of having a Python script as a file is now I can type Python in here in this window. Let's say So you'll notice that when I type in this script, there is syntax highlighting, so the color corresponds to the type of variable. So, and then to save that, I'll just hit uh, the usual save key sh keyboard shortcut. And there's also a uh, save Python file here. So now the challenge is, how would I run that file? And what I'll do is I'll open up a new launcher window and get to the terminal. So once I'm in the terminal, I can type, uh, if you're in Mac or Linux, you'll type ls. And if you're in Windows, you'll type dir to get a directory listing of all the contents. And you'll see that that listing of uh, files is the same as what we see in the, in the navigator. So now I have the myscript.py file. So I can type Python 3 myscript, and it ran the code. So that's one way of uh, running a Python script within Jupyter in a terminal. The third option that Jupyter offers is a console. So I'm going to click on the Python 3 console. And this is uh, an interactive uh, Python session. So I'll say a equals 5. And then that will be in the Python history. So now I can type something else, 3 plus 4. And that returns a result. And now I can reference a variable that I had previously. I can say a plus 8. And that returns because a was stored in the history. Unlike uh, a Jupyter notebook, I can't go back and edit these cells now. So this is a console they typically see uh, in uh, Linux or Mac where you're just running the read evaluate print loop statement. So this is just evaluating things and storing them, but it's not as editable as the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so just one quick wrap up. The three different ways to run Python in Jupyter is through a notebook, web inter uh, a web interface with Jupyter Notebook. Another is to create a text file and then run that text file in the terminal. And the third way is to run your commands in a console.